Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are at Challenge Penticton behind me, Okanagan Lake, where the athletes will be swimming tomorrow. We are based at the Hooded Merganser. This is the Canadian Multisport National Championships next year, 2017 ITU World Championships, six world championships and ten events. My guest, Nathan Killam. How you doing, Nathan? I'm doing great, Bob. Thanks for having me on. So full-time firefighter and a professional athlete. How do you balance the whole firefighting thing? You want to get this thing a little closer. Uh, it's a it's a bit of a balancing act, I yeah. guess. Uh, it pretty much takes up all your time. There's not a lot of time for much else other than yeah. training, racing, recovering, and working. Yeah. So uh, just kind of, I have a coach that's very flexible. We kind of work on a bit of a different weekday schedule right. than most people do. So it yeah. kind of works out well. What I love is your background, that you were, you know, played a little hockey, played a little baseball, you were a goalie, but then you got, you know, out of high school, all of a sudden you got a little big. You yeah. Get, what, 210? Yeah, 210 was, I think, the, the tipping point on the scale. That was the top end. And, and at that point, not really working out? Nothing. I hated exercise. Really? Didn't like getting the heart rate up. Yeah, yeah. Just playing video games, pizza, McDonald's, working on race cars, all the... All the fun things that you wish you could have done when you were in high school. Yeah. So what turned it around for you? Kind of hit the uh, hit that 210 pound mark and thought, man, I got to change something because this is this is only a couple months out of high school and I'm already this big. And uh, my girlfriend at the time started going to the gym. I thought, man, that's 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 the ticket right there. Right. Stop going to McDonald's. No fast food anymore. Uh, started working out a couple times a week. Yeah, not yeah. too much. Wanted you know. Easy didn't want to overdo it. No, yeah. I don't want to don't want to pull something yeah. right. So. Uh, yeah, and the weight just came off pretty quick. I think it was the diet. The, the nutrition was a big oh, part that's of that, a wasn't big it? One. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, Wednesdays, Whopper Wednesdays, you go to Burger King, <laughs> you get two for one, right? How can you say no to that? Exactly. I love so, that. So, yeah, just I think uh, just starting to eat healthy and getting into a little bit of exercise, I think, made the biggest difference in the. The, the weight just melted away. So as the weight's coming off, did you, when did this whole world of triathlon come in or did it start with running or swimming? Yeah, it just started with uh, running at the gym, just uh, on the treadmill, always had to be on the treadmill, had to have the TV on. Yeah. Just couldn't, couldn't run outside, I hated running outside. Yeah. And then I slowly got into more running. I would do local running race once a year. Then one year I thought, man, I've been running a little more than usual this year. I think I'm gonna just try and see how fast I can go. And I went pretty quick and I thought, oh yeah, I'm just going to keep doing these, see if I can get faster and faster. Started yeah. to get competitive, you know, that drive kind of kicks yeah. in. And and then uh, I just I got faster and faster at the 10Ks, and then all of a sudden I broke my tailbone that winter snowboarding. So I thought, man, I can't run, can't do anything, what am I going to do? Well, I thought maybe I'll get in the pool, Started taught myself how to swim. And uh, then that, that summer I started bike commuting to work once I was all healed up, and the, my friend said, man, you got to do this triathlon thing. There's one right near my cabin. <laughs> And uh, you're going to love it. You can swim, you can bike, you can run. This is, this is going to be the perfect thing for you. And I yeah. thought, this sounds a little crazy, but... Uh, what the heck? What, what the heck? Why not? Yeah. Why not? So I, I did it, and uh, I was so hooked. I absolutely loved it. How'd you I, do? I won. I you, won wait, the... First yeah, race was, out. Yeah, it was called my first triathlon. And, and so every, it was your first there, win. Yeah, it was my first win. And uh, I made some friends there, and I'm still friends with those guys today. Isn't that and, cool? Oh, that's what I love about this sport. There's, you just make friends everywhere you go. So you win your first time out. When did you decide, okay, this is cool. I'm gonna, I might as well just go become a pro at this thing. Uh, it was a couple years in, actually. I think it was after my third season. I uh, had a really good result in Austin 70.3, and I thought, man, I, I beat a whole bunch of those pro guys. Like, maybe, I can, uh, yeah. maybe I can try this pro thing. So uh, I went to the, our national federation and uh, got my, my card the next year. And uh, it's pretty much been, it's been an uphill battle the whole way. I, I didn't realize how, how fast everybody was. Yes. So it's, it's kind of interesting going from being up near the, like the front of the age group pack and then all of a sudden you go to the pro and you're, <laughs> you're kind of in the middle or in the back. And it's like, whoa, this is a whole different it's world. a little different world. But I'm sure sometimes you look back and you go, this is the this is Nathan at 210 pounds, and here's Nathan as a professional triathlete and a firefighter. Yeah, I mean that's a and that mix is nice. I bet that helps you keep that balance. Yeah, you kind of get perspective. Uh, I mean, if if I just grew up, you know, being in all the different endurance sports, and you'd be done never, by now. I bet. Yeah, I mean, eventually you just get bored of it. You don't really have any anything to look back on. Yeah. So I think that having that background allows me to really enjoy and appreciate what I have now. So. Yeah, it's been really been a big metamorphosis over the last few years, and uh, 
it's a really big journey and I, I like sharing with people. Very so cool. I can show people that, you know, you, you don't have to grow up doing all these, no. the swim club and the, the track club. You don't have to do all that. You can come from nothing and you can make a little bit of something. What I tell people all the time is, what well, one, our sport's an equal opportunity abuser. It doesn't matter what size you are. You come out here, we'll slap you around a little bit. <laughs> But it's also something that you can do forever, right? Oh, you, yeah. can, you can be better at 50 than you were at 40. And you could have no background in all three sports and learn them a little bit each day and become pretty darn good, right? It's, yeah. it's something that does change your life. Oh, certainly. And you're a perfect example of that. Yeah. I came from nothing, started when I was 21. and So you started at 21, 21, really, with no background, no swim, background, bike, or run. Nothing. Nothing, just hard work. Just so, day in, day out, hard work. So when you look at your racing over the last couple of years as a pro, what race sticks out is it mean, meaning the most to you? Oh, there's there's so many races. Everyone, I mean, Wildflower. Yes. That uh, that's one of a favorite of mine, uh, mainly because it's it's hard. It's such a hard course, yeah. and it just has such a history. It does. So when I was uh, first starting triathlon, I used to watch the documentary What It Takes, featuring <laughs> Peter Reed, Peter Reed, and Laurie Heather Bode, Fier, yeah, yeah. Laurie Bode, and all those guys. And uh, Wildflower was one of the races they did, and yes. I used to watch that that documentary before every race. Really? And I watch. I've probably watched it a hundred times. And I loved it, and I always thought to myself, I gotta, I gotta go and do this race. So in, in 2009, I went and did the Olympic. Yes. I thought, wow, this is amazing. One day I'm gonna come back and do yeah, the, yeah. the, the long course. And uh, a couple years ago, in 2014, yeah. it was. It was my first time back doing, first time ever doing the long course. And man, it was such an eye opener how hard that course was. And then the last two years, I've gone back and just been improving on my finish every year. And now how'd you do this year? Uh, this year I was sixth. Way to go! So That's a good feel. Last yeah. year was eighth, so slowly getting closer. And uh, it's just the vibe of that race is fantastic. The people are great. Yeah. You get to see all your buddies because the field's so big. All your buddies that you race with all year long, they're all going to be there. And the course is just will knock you down if you're not not paying attention. So that's is probably one of my favorites. When you uh, being being a pro and being traveling the way you're traveling now is, is there do you look at it and just go hey this is just you know rather than go god i finished eighth i want to do six it seems like you're the type of guy when you're finished a race you know what I, what i got is what i got but i'm still just loving this journey oh yeah yeah i uh i enjoy every moment of of getting to go to the races race the race and then yeah. hanging out after you get to meet so many new people you get to meet race directors you get to meet people like you steve king yeah. legends of the sport you get to meet new guys that are coming into it, and you just kind of kind of enjoy all of it. I mean, if you're not really enjoying it, you're not going to last very long, right? So You'll beat yourself up yeah, after exactly. every bad race. So, I mean, if I have a bad race, yeah, you know, I'm a little bummed, but, you know, you just got to learn from it and keep going. There's always going to be another race, right? So, you know, last year I came eighth, and some people might think, oh, well, that's, you know, that's pretty, yeah. pretty far down, eighth place. But, I mean, I was ecstatic. And this year coming sixth, I was almost twice as happy so exactly. you know just seeing little improvements and you know those are my little those are my little wins those are your victories so what are your goals here and uh, is this the first time you've raced here or are you raced no now? i've uh i've been racing every year since 2012 when oh, it was okay. the last ironman the last ironman and, wow uh, i used to come and volunteer actually out on the the bike turnaround out in Carameas. yes every year i would volunteer there and then once we we're done there we'd race back so we could watch the finish and uh yeah it was always really exciting and I always thought, man, I want to do this one day, and I kind of wanted to wait until I was old enough to, to do the full distance, and I've been back every year since, so it's kind of neat to see the race evolve as it has into yeah. the multi-sport uh, festival that it's, it's so you, becoming now. So you like that, like we're talking six world championships over 10 days next year, right here in the backyard. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I told Mike, he's got to put that cross triathlon on the first day, yes. so I can do that, and then I can come ah. do the long course race. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I did the Aquathon uh, two days ago. With, yep, I saw with you, you Bob. Out there, that was yeah. great to see out there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just I think it brings so many more people in into one area, and everyone can enjoy all the different races together. So, you know, if you're racing on, you know, in the middle of the week, you yes. can stick around. You can watch all the other races, and you just get even more excited about all the racing. Love it, Nathan. Thanks so much for taking time. Thanks man. very much for having great me. Great to have you in the sport. I love your story. I love your enthusiasm because there's a lot of people out there. We're going, ah, triathlon. People think it's an uber sport. You've got to be some super athlete. And the fact that you were a 210-pound guy, uh, basically a, a hockey player and a baseball catcher, and next thing you know, you're a professional triathlete traveling the world. Yeah, every, anyone. Anyone can do it. Absolutely anyone. There's no excuses. I've seen everyone of every shape and size and every background doing it. So if, if I can convince one person to, to start triathlon yeah. or even take up exercising, yes. then... 
I think that's a You've win. You've done your job. Oh, I've totally done my job. No more Whopper Wednesday. No more Whopper Wednesday. <laughs> Stay away. Stay away on Wednesdays. <laughs> this again is Breakfast with Bob. Uh, Nathan Killam has been our guest with the Hooded Merganser. We're also at Challenge Penticton. Hold on, everybody. We will be right back.